I'm going to give you a few tips that I've used over, I guess, 10, 11 years now of playing with live and doing this week in and week out at a church uh, of how I manage my content. The first thing, the first tip is to create a template to work from. So what I can show you guys, let me actually go into live and I'm going to pull up the template that I use to do this. So I created a template that's preset with mappings um, for when I work with Ableton Live or build a set. So if I hit, uh, go up here to this MIDI button, you'll see I have a bunch of stuff already pre-mapped. What's great is when I take a song and I drag it in here, or I go to build a set, which you'll see me do here in a second, um, I don't have to go and make all my MIDI assignments. It's already done for me. So when I have this template, and if I'm building things with a template, and you definitely should use a template, then that's going to speed up the process uh, immensely. The other thing you should do is develop a file structure for all your files. Um, and that you're maybe going, what in the world does that mean? But it's really important that you have a file structure um, that is basically the same uh, across all your files. And if you do that, and um, as you create that file structure, then when you drag your files in and build your set, you're not going to go, oh, I got to delete this track, I got to delete that, and move things around. Everything's going to be nice and neat. Um, and I'll go in here in a second and show you my uh, an actual file that I've created and talk through how I do that um, and show you what I'm doing. The other thing is develop a consistent naming structure. Now, this may be the most lame thing we talk about all tonight, but it's probably one of the most important things we talk about. So um, I, I'll just show you what I do. So you can see over here in the browser, this is a song we were working with earlier, The Lord Our God. The way I name it is I put the song title all with underscores. It's from my PC days where I had to or the computer would explode because they wouldn't know the track name. Um, and then I put the artist or whatever arrangement that is. So in this case, it's the passion version. Um, then the next thing I do is I put the key. So you can see here, this is passion B. Then I put the tempo. Then I have this little guy here that says MT. Can anyone guess what MT is saying? Multi-track. Wow, I don't, you guys are geniuses. Yeah, I don't know how you got that. But um, that stands for multi-track. And I'll talk about here in a second why I have those different versions. But this is really important. Because at least in my situation, uh, at our church, we have multiple campuses, we have multiple worship leaders. And guess what? We're creative people, which means we can never make our mind up, right? So each worship leader has a different arrangement. I just showed you how to create a custom arrangement. But you're going to end up with six versions of the Lord our God on your computer. When you go to build your set, it might take two to three hours just because you're going, oh, which version was this? And you go in and you can't find it and you're trying to find things. If you can name things really well, and it could be as simple as saying the Lord our God underscore passion underscore double intro or double chorus um, and then the tempo and the key. That's going to help immensely to do that. And lastly, and I said this at the beginning, take the time to do it right. Okay, So sit down and think about it, maybe on the ride home if you have a, a three hour drive home or a, a 30 minute drive home. Think about, okay, how could I do this? Where could I store the files? Where could I keep them? I'll encourage you to do this. Don't store your files on your computer. Have an external hard drive that you store things on and just bring files over to your computer to use that for playback mainly. And that's going to help a lot. Um, so that's a few tips for managing your song content. And I want to show you my process now. Okay? So I'm going to open up a file. This is the Lord our God. We kind of worked with this earlier. And you'll notice this is, probably looks a little differently than what you guys have seen before. And I want to talk you through what each of these are, just so you know what you're seeing. Um, so I take all my songs and I take all the content that I've downloaded from multitracks.com or content I've created on my own, and I sync it to Live's Click. And the reason I do that and I warp it, uh, the reason I do that is so that, again, as you saw earlier, I can change my tempo, I can change my key, I can edit my arrangement, and everything follows. And I can use custom sounds that will sync up along with that content really, really well. So let's talk through what these are. The first one is this click track. Now, um, this isn't the built-in click that's included with this. If I double click, you'll see this is kind of a fancy deal. And I've even customized this further from what it is for my church. So this is called Foundations. This is something we offer at multitracks.com. If you go there and go to the store, you'll see Foundations. This is something I created basically to, to um, meet a need that I had. Uh, at the time, I was playing at different uh, churches. And I would get a live set built, and I would press play. And the drummer would go, man, thank you. That's the best click I've ever heard. And I thought, yes, I solved one of the world's problems. I created a great click sound. Well, the next week, I'd go to another church, and the drummer would go, dude, that is the worst click ever. Where did you get that? 
And I'm going, come on, man, you're, you're driving me crazy. So I needed the need to have multiple click sounds. I also needed the uh, ability to subdivide my click. So if I'm at a slower tempo, I want eights in there. If I'm at a faster tempo, I probably just want quarters. So what Foundations gives me the ability to do, if I press play here, let's actually start right here at the beginning. Okay. So I have a count in programmed in here. Um, you can hear the click. We have different click types. So as that click plays, I can change the click types. Okay. The other great thing about this is if you go to seven, it's blank. Well, that's so that you can use your own click sound. So if you're one of those people that go, man, we created the perfect click sound for our campus, for our church, and it works, uh, you can still use foundations and load in your own sounds and still have the flexibility to go, okay, let's bring our eights out. Let's just have quarters. Uh, we could bring our accent out if we wanted to where we just have the quarter notes. We could raise the volume of our accent higher. You can see it's a little louder now. Uh, I could bring my eights back in. Okay. Again, I'll change my click sound here. I can bring sixteenths in if, for whatever weird reason, you wanted sixteenths going along with that, you could have it. And the great thing is I have control over my click volume, right? So I could change that there. And then if I start this back at the beginning, we have this cool little feature where I can change the voice. Two, three, four. Right? The voice type. And it's that simple. So if you like the creepy male voice, which is my friend Matt. And what's funny is he sounds nothing like that in real life. I'm like, hey, Matt, you want to come record something? Yeah, man, that'd be great. It's like, all right, here we go. OK, I'm ready. And I press play, one, two, three. Dude, come on. You don't talk like that at all. Um, here's number two, which is my wife. So uh, you know that's obviously my favorite there, because it's number two. And then one is everything sounds better with a British accent, even counting. So uh, that's the click track, which is Foundations, which is available at multitracks.com uh, and go to the store. The next one, how many of you guys build sets frequently in arrangement view? OK, a few of you. You are going to come up and kiss me on the lips after I show you this next trip. <laughs> trick. <clears throat> and the majority of you, I don't want you kissing me on the lips. Um, but you will want to after this. So the tempo track, if you drag in a file in arrangement view, um, typically what you have to do is go down here to our master track and uh, program in our tempo automation. So you can go in, you go to song tempo, you write in your tempo automation. The great thing about that is you can have tempo changes. So you speed up, you slow down. The thing that stinks about that, though, is you have your song file, you set it. When you drag that file in to build your set, you still have to redo all that, right? So you build your set, and it takes you an extra five, 10 minutes uh, every set to redo that. With our tempo track, though, we don't have to do that. So the cool feature in Live, any audio clip in Arrangement View can act as a master or a slave to Live's tempo. So what that means is um, an audio clip like uh, this one, if I go here and double click and go to Clip View, you can see this says slave. Now what that means is this is slaved to Live's master tempo, which is 72. So you saw earlier, uh, when I create my custom arrangement, I can change the tempo and things follow it. That's a great feature. And when we use warping, we can do that. But Live's tempo can follow the tempo of a track. So if your track, uh, if you go in and you set your warp markers and you have a track, um, you know, stereotypical choir tracks, they speed up and they slow down. And you drag it in, you go, I can't use Ableton, and I got to do this, and I, I got to set this every week. If you take that track and you set your warp markers to show live where one, two, three, four is as you go, live's click is going to adjust and change with it. It's a really, really cool thing. But here's the trick uh, the tempo track, all it is, if I double click, it's a measure of silence, it's an audio track. But when I go down here and I click that, instead of being slave, I set it to master. And then whatever you type in in this segment BPM box, becomes the tempo that your live set is at. So right now you see 72. If I take this off and put it to slave and type 85, hit enter, and then hit master again, you'll see it change that to 85. If I press play, it automatically changed it to 85. Now what's cool about that though is as we go to build our set, your song is gonna play at 85 BPM. You don't have to go in and you don't have to automate your tempo, you don't have to set it down here in our master track. Uh, it's going to follow along. And if you use multiple uh, clips like that, if, you, um, if any of you have tried to play Oceans by Hillsong, you know like halfway through the song it drops 5 BPM or speeds up or something. 
And it's like, come on, just be the same BPM. Um, what's great is if you have two tempo tracks in the same track, two tempo clips, then your first one can be whatever the first tempo is. And then you set that. And right when you get to that point, it'll change tempos and save with the file. So the tempo track is very cool. The next one here is the stop track. Um, this is another feature of uh, arrangement view is if you play multiple songs, and we'll build a set list here in a second, and you'll see this. If I lay songs next to each other, they're going to automatically continue to play unless I hit spacebar and stop it. Um, now, that's kind of a bummer because if you are playing and maybe you want to talk in between song one and two, uh, and if you're a worship leader, you're up here playing, right? you're doing your thing, you don't want to you know, get out of this great song, everyone's clapping, and you're going, uh, all right, yeah, that was a great song, and everyone's like, come on, man. Um, yeah, it's, it's, it's not good. You know, I've had people stop me at church and they go, what are you doing on that computer? And I'm like, I, I'm, I'm playing tracks. And like, I thought you were on YouTubes. And it's like, no, <laughs> not on the YouTubes. Um, but here's what the stop track is. Now, this may go really deep for a second, and I'm still going to move on because I have a, a video um, that you can find on the Multitracks uh, blog um, that will talk you through how to create this. But basically what the stop track is, is it's a MIDI clip um, that I have assigned to the stop button here. And I use this great feature uh, that's built into every Mac computer. If you don't have a Mac, you can use a PC. Uh, there's a few devices. I believe it's uh, MIDI Oak or MIDI Ox OX um, that can give you kind of the same functionality. But I take this MIDI clip and I assign it to the stop button so that whenever I get to that MIDI clip, it stops. So you saw me earlier use this MIDI button up here um, to, you saw my template, saw that I had certain things assigned to certain functions. I did the same thing with this stop clip, toward this clip is going to stop right when we get there. And the way I do this is a great feature called the IEC driver, right? And it's going to route up to the IEC driver back into this track. And when I get here, it stops, right? So what's cool about this is this continues and carries over between songs. So if I want, uh, after song one, to stop, um, then live's playback is going to stop. I can talk. I press two, play, and my next song is going to go, which is really great. If you guys, again, if you've built sets for a while, the next thing is going to be huge too. This is called my markers track. Um, when you get a file and you create your locators and you try to drag that file into a set to build a set, um, you'll notice the locators don't come with it. And again, the locators are these guys up here. It's kind of a bummer because then you have to go back, listen to your song, add your locators. And you build a three song set and it could take 40 to 50 minutes because you're adding your locators, you're uh, setting your tempo. The markers track, all it is is a MIDI track that I created a MIDI clip in, and then I split the clip and rename it. So when I drag a song into um, my new live set, then that's going to come along with it so I can see where my spots are that I need uh, locators, and I can quickly add locators if I need to. Or I could just go right here where the locator would be and click and start right where I want to. Hey, it's kind of a cool tempo for what I got. That worked out. Uh, let me change that back to 72 because I will come back and reference this. Okay, um, Or I could click my locator and add it if I wanted to using that marker, markers track. But that's a great tip because as you bring content in, it's going to follow along. Uh, two more things. Um, the original track here. This is the original MP3 that I've synced up to Live's Click using warping. And the reason I do this is twofold. There's uh, so many times where you're in a rehearsal and maybe the vocalists go, OK, what's the line there? What's the words? Is it this or is it this for the verse? Um, all you have to do is go, uh, yeah, let's go to verse 2, press play. Right? And you know exactly what those words were right in that section, as opposed to opening up your iPhone, putting it up against the mic, skipping through, going, I think that's a verse. And two minutes later, you realize it's the same words as verse 1, and you wasted everyone's time. Um, the other great thing, and you'll see this later, is I use the original track to program lyric cues in for ProPresenter. So when you go in to sync your lyrics up in ProPresenter, um, if you have that to listen to, then you can slide your clips around and get it just right instead of going, I think this is where it starts. Um, the last thing here is all my multi-tracks are on my stems um, in one track. So what I did is I grouped all these, and then I go in and I turn off what I don't need. So I probably don't need bass. Uh, I don't need acoustic guitar this time or choir. Um, and I could just go and customize this. Well, then when I select all these tracks, hold Shift, and I can right click and select Group, it's going to group all those tracks. And then I name it The Lord Our God so that I know what track that is. But instead of having this open up, and that's pretty overwhelming to see that to me, uh, especially as we add lots and lots more songs. 
If I select all those tracks and group them, then now it's, it's really easy and manageable to see. The very last piece of this, which is, again, something I've developed over time, is if I go and I want to create a fade out, um, I could maybe go in and automate the fade using the fader for this track. But what I do is I use a utility device. And that's a plugin or audio effect built into live. You could go to audio effects here, go to utility, and drag that in. And what that allows me to do is it allows me to automate this, and then I can still go over and use my fader for this to adjust my overall volume. And it doesn't uh, ride over any of that automation that I made on the utility device. So um, that's a few tricks, tips to manage your set, and a look at kind of my Ableton Live setup and how I use it.